Where'd you go? Oh, oh we put that there. I thought that cooler <laughs> blew into the yard or something at first. We put that there. Good morning, everybody. I'm Trucker Josh. As I'm known on the internet, you can just call me Josh if you want. I make daily videos here on the internet, mostly of me trucking around Canada and the United States, but I happen to be on holidays right now. So I invite you to come hang out with me at home for a day. See what a trucker does on his time off. At least see what this trucker does on his time off. We're starting the day off, letting the boys outside. And then I want to finish off this little patio deck that I was building for my son. Yesterday was our boating day. We rented a boat uh, out of a place called Escape Rentals in Bodette, Minnesota. It's actually north of Bodette quite a bit, up the Rainy River. Uh, but it was awesome. We had a great time. Uh, it was, a, I believe, a 24-foot pontoon. Uh, there's us and a couple of our best friends came with us, uh, Rick and Sabrina. And we had a great time. Didn't catch any fish, but uh, we did catch some good times. Had a lot of fun. You can go to my channel and uh, check out that video if you want to. So this is the patio deck that I'm building here. It's going to go right beside his little playhouse. So this was a sandbox. We took all the sand and put it over there for now. Got to find another place for it yet. But since we have dogs, uh, we didn't want a sandbox in our yard because the dogs sometimes, you know, take care of business in the sandbox because they're not civilized. They're dogs, right? So uh, we didn't want our son playing around in that. So my wife came up with a solution. Why don't we turn it into a little patio deck, right? And if you watched my video a few days ago already, you've heard this whole story already. I can go back uh, on my video. I've been at home for a week now, so there's a couple of home time videos and a few more to come yet before we get back in the truck. Uh, we're going to put that little patio there, sort of right beside our bonfire pit. And put like a little kitty picnic table on there or something so that, you know, when we're making s'mores or roasting marshmallows or wieners or something over there, he has a nice little place to go sit outside his own little house there. And he can hang out and do stuff. And this is our willow tree for the new people that we planted this year. Kind of a sentimental tree to me. It's our family tree. We moved into this house. Uh, this is our forever home. It's where we want to raise our kids uh, we moved in here late last year so this is our first summer here so that tree right there was planted in our first summer obviously it was a few years old already we bought it it was already about 14 feet tall but that tree is supposed to be back here growing while our family is growing and then when my kids come back to visit you know when they're 20 30 years old down the road and i'm an old grandpa that tree will uh be a good memory for us. It's already grown quite a bit. It's already touching the ground here. It definitely wasn't anywhere near that a month ago. But it does, like it's developing some black spots on it. I'm a little bit worried. See that? Do any of you knowledgeable, wonderful people out there watching, or any of you tree experts, do you know what that is and why it's doing that? Could you let me know down below in the comment section, please? I, uh, I don't like that. Honestly, had it already. So, I mean, it doesn't look the greatest, right? It's supposed to be green. Is it getting too much water? These willow trees are supposed to be really moisture uh, resilient. They really like the moisture. That's why we planted it back here. It's kind of a lower part of the yard away from the house. It gets a lot of moisture there. Does that mean it's getting too much or does that mean something else? It's the bottom, all of those spots. I know you can't really see it, but... Oh yeah, it goes almost all the way to the top, but the very, very top branches don't have any spots. Hmm. Anyways, let's get inside. Let's get our son awake and up. Let's get these dogs fed. And it's a perfect day to start working on that patio because, well, as long as it doesn't start to rain, it's a nice cool temperature out here today. Won't be sweating through my shirt like I was when I did that frame. If you guys uh, remember that video? Sweating so much, it was so hot that day I put that together. Oh man, this Canadian was melting. 
once again for the new people. I grew up in southeast Manitoba in Canada. That's western Canada. If you look at it on a map, it's right in the middle, central Canada. We consider ourselves part of the western provinces of Canada. I was born and raised here in the southeast corner around uh, the Hanover Municipality area, which includes, you know, Steinbeck, Niverville, Grunthal, Kleefeld, uh, New Bothwell. What other towns have we got here? I'm missing a couple, aren't I? Blumenort. That's uh, sort of my home region. This is, this is where I call home. You hungry? No? You're not hungry. I'm just kidding. I know, I know. We're gonna have breakfast now. So this garage is my workshop area for now. Just keeping all the sawdust and stuff in here just to keep it manageable. That way it's easier to get rid of later and sweep it up and get rid of it. I didn't want to do it in the backyard and have all that sawdust and wood chips and stuff in the lawn where our kid plays and where our dogs play. I huh, probably wouldn't have done anything, it's just sawdust, it's pretty much just soft, right? But I still didn't want that back there, so. Easy to clean up in here, so that's why we're in here. So, this is what I used here for the frame of the deck, right? Here are the one by sixes we're gonna use for the surface of it. And that's just a wheelbarrow of dirt. That's the dirt that we have le had left over after uh, planting myrtle in the back there. This will just go in our flower beds and I need to go pick up a bunch more to sort of clean up around our fence. That's another project I was supposed to do this week. I have one more week of holidays left here and uh, oh, we got projects galore already. Finish this patio, get that fence done, but that's being done by a contractor so I don't really have to do anything there. I just have to remove that temporary fence before he gets there. Uh, if you're new to the channel, when we moved in here, uh, there was a gap at the back of the fence because the previous owners didn't need a full fence around the yard. So you can see in the back there, see, that area there was open. So uh, the yard seemed a bit bigger, but we want to close it off with a six foot fence just like this here. It's going to be identical to that, just new across the entire back. That's getting done this week sometime. In the meantime, we needed our dogs to stay in the yard, and that's why we have that temporary wall built there. It's done the trick. You can also see along the bottoms, though. We've had to uh, just do a quick fix. That was last fall, right before the snow fell. And we just did a quick fix just to plug up the bottom gap, because the fence was in some places like six inches above the ground underneath it. So our small dogs could, they didn't even have to duck. They could just walk right underneath the fence. And that's, well, defeats the purpose of having a fence. For us, we have a fence so that our dogs stay in the yard. We're very uh, uh, conscious of the fact that we want our dogs to be uh, good and well-behaved and not a nuisance to one single person. So we're very careful. We train them not to bark. Uh, that's a, that's a, an ongoing process every day. They get excited when new people come over, but when they're in the backyard and just hanging around back here, they're not allowed to bark. Sometimes it happens and then we deal with it then. We just tell them to be quiet and remind them. But other than that, we don't want our dogs running onto other people's property. There's nothing more annoying than having neighbors who don't control their dogs. Like, why do you have dogs if you're, if you're not going to train them and control them, right? At least teach them. You don't maybe control is maybe the wrong word, but you know what I mean, right? Why have dogs if you're going to put them in your backyard and let them bark nonstop? for hours and hours and just be a nuisance to everyone around you. That is like one, that is probably my biggest pet peeves of dog owners who live in town who don't get their dogs to stop barking. Barking dogs is just unacceptable in my opinion. So our dogs and in our yard, that is unacceptable. Number two, why have dogs if you don't have the means to contain them on your property? If you have dogs and you want them to be loose in your yard well, legally, you do have to have a fence then. But you know, some bylaws seem to be a little looser and less enforced than other bylaws. So some people have their dogs loose in their yard without a fence. In that case, you should be able to keep your dog on your property. I don't want people's dogs running onto my property, you know, coming running at my kids. Maybe they're friendly, maybe they're not. 
this is my property. I don't want to have to worry about neighbor dogs showing up here and either causing problems or scaring the kids or, you know, I think I'm speaking to the choir here right now. You guys understand what I'm saying. So to be a responsible dog owner, you have to have a fence for your dog so your dog can run free, exercise, keep them in your property and don't have them barking. So the fence is the second part there. Keep them on your property. Very important for us to have a fence. That's the only reason we have it. And for privacy too. That's a that's the second reason. It's just it's nice to have your own space. They say good fences make good neighbors. It's not that we don't like our neighbors. We love our neighbors on both sides. Those are great people. But it's just nice to have that fence so that they can have their own private family get-togethers and things in the backyard there. We can have our own private things here. And we're not necessarily, you know, like in each other's business all the time. You know what I mean? Like, you can sort of have your own family moments. It's uh, it's nice to have a fence for that. But anyway, enough babbling. Sorry, I've talked so much here. Uh, let's measure these things out. And uh, where did I put my measuring tape now? I started talking to you guys and I, oh, here it is. Let's see how long these things are. So, from here, it should be about eight feet. Almost exactly eight feet. Let's do this next one. Over there, let's just move that over to that one. Oh, 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 there we go. Yeah, pretty much exactly eight foot. It's like eight foot and one sixteenth. We'll just say it's eight feet exactly, which is odd. Usually it's like off by half an inch. I remember when we bought, uh, I built the deck at our old place in the front. I built it out of two by sixes just like this. And I bought eight footers, right? So. I didn't measure them, I just assumed an eight foot would be an eight foot. So I built the frame of the deck for an eight foot piece, right? Turns out the entire like group of wood, or the bunch of wood that I bought for that deck, the two by sixes, were a half inch short of eight feet. And I didn't realize that until I laid them on the frame that I made, and I'm like, well, they're too short. I still made it work, but now <laughs> I learned my lesson. Always measure the wood before you build something. Just because it says it's a two by six by eight doesn't mean it's a two by six by eight. It's probably like a one and three quarter by five and a half by seven and three quarter or something or seven and uh, five eighths or seven and a half. You get what I mean, right? It's, it's never, I'm pretty surprised that these are actually exactly eight feet long. Shout out to E.G. Penner. I know they didn't cut it, but whoever they bought this wood from actually measured it. So now we're gonna go up back here to where the frame is. We had a little bit of rain after I talked to you last. It's nice, it smells like fresh rain out here right now. But it's a perfect time to finish this because it's not too hot. Now those pieces are gonna be laying across this way. So, just make sure this is eight feet. It should be eight feet here. Exactly. Perfect. And let's go. If I can get this measuring tape to work here. Measure this side here. Oh, this side's a little more than eight feet. Oh, it's very like ooh, but a half inch. Okay, so I'll have to take that into account. It's not perfect. It was a sandbox before, right? I didn't actually make the outside exterior frame. I just put those in and those there. So I've got to pull all these up and out. Cut new ones from there as well. Take the uh, the trim off the bottom here, probably around the door as well, so I can get it in there properly. Let's uh, see if we can get this done. <laughs> The easy part is done. I didn't even have to cut those to size. They were already the perfect length. So the majority of it's done, right? Strong and sturdy. Okay, so now for all the custom cuts. Now the uh, the hard part starts. Because uh, I have to cut a strip to fit in there. Cut it, notch it around the... Uh, 
siding there, the trim. Then we have to pull that out and cut new ones for there so it matches. So cutting this thin one here will be the most difficult one. I think I've got it done here. We will uh, give it a try. Let's slip this in here. See, it's got that notch there. And that end, that's got that notch there to get around that siding over there. So let's slide that that way. Right like that. And then put this here. Just like that. And boom! Check, see how good it is over here. I went a little wide on it there, but oh, yeah, that's perfect. Perfect. Slip that in there. Slip that in there. Ha! Nice. I think that turned out pretty good. A little narrow on there, but that uh, molding on the bottom there, the edging is going to cover that over here. A little bit too much there, but no one's even gonna know the difference. They'll never know. Who's gonna know? How would they know? So that was the hardest part. That part's done now. The next part gonna be a little easier. I'm just gonna take the old boards from around there. It had the special cut for around the uh, post there. I'm just gonna outline this on a new board. That way I know the cut is perfect. And it's exactly like the old one. I think it turned out pretty good. I mean, look at this. This is perfect. I do say so myself. So now, I just gotta rip up these boards. They're being a little bit stubborn because the screws are very old and filled with gunk. But uh, I'll get them out. Just brrr, replace those and we're done. And put all the uh, trim back on. Getting further. Another update. Still working on this. I went inside for supper and uh, took a little break. So it's been, I've been tinkering at it all day, picking away at it. So this is all completely done here now, down to there. I've just cut all of these boards for the new front deck, front patio. All I gotta do is screw them in now. But other than that, I mean, once those are screwed down and the trim is put back on, then we're done. So we're getting there. A little holiday project. This is for you kids when you grow up. When you get all excited for your your ho holidays, you think you're going to play video games all day and relax and do nothing. No, especially once you're married. You know, your holidays are all about your honey-do list. And if you're wondering what's a honey-do list, ask your dad. I'm sure he's got one. Grand opening. <sighs> Done. Just put in the last screw. Oh, it feels good. Took me two way, two days of slow picking away at it. Got her done. This wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. Pretty straightforward. Pretty easy to cut around this here. I'm going to put a little brace or a piece at the bottom of this post here just to cover that up. And that's it. Anybody hungry? Hungry, hungry? Chef Josh on duty. A man of many skills. The usual for you? Yeah? I like how you keep it easy for me. Oh, yeah. I think it turned out all right. We're wrapping this vlog up for you. I'm still on vacation time here for a couple of days yet. We have a couple of projects going on. And since I'm filming this in the future, I don't want to give it away. So I can't show you the yard right now because there's some big changes happening that you haven't seen yet and that there's a vlog coming in the future showing it. So I don't want to spoil that vlog. So i got to be careful what I show you back here. But I do want to show you what we finished in this video. One of the honey-do list projects.
checked off the list. And I'm no like professional carpenter or anything, but uh, I think it turned out all right. I made it way stronger than I had to. I didn't actually have to put a joist in there every foot. I thought that the one by sixes wouldn't be as strong and that I'd need a brace underneath there every foot. I didn't want them to like bend through and sag. But over here in this section, you see how the screws go up to there? There's a joist there, but there's not one under here. Here it's a two foot section instead of a one foot section. And it's just fine. They don't sag through at all. So I could have gotten away with just doing one every two feet over there very easily, but meh, whatever. Now this thing is solid. I mean, you could drive a tank over this. And, uh, you know, at least I didn't build it too flimsy and weak, right? That's solid. That ain't going anywhere. <laughs> if you're gonna build it, build it right. But speaking of building things, uh, our fence in the back of the yard right now. I'm not going to spoil it for you. I'm not going to show it for you in this vlog. But uh, that is also a project that's getting done on my holiday time here before I get back on the road. So that's something coming up in the home time videos. I got about, what am I on here? Five or six, maybe four or five or six home time videos coming yet after this as I'm on my vacation time here. Just enjoying time with my family. Uh, we did go on that boating trip yesterday in yesterday's video. But for the most part, we just got things done around the house here. That's sort of how it is when you're a truck driver. You take holidays and you stay home. It's just nice to be at home with the family every day. But we'll be back on the road before you know it. And then I'm going to have to work, work, work all the way to Christmas. I have to work really hard. <laughs> holidays aren't cheap. Especially when you got all these projects to get done. But anyways, thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for hanging out with me. I'll see you later. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, and if you're looking for more trucking content, go to my uh, main page, click my username down below, go to my main channel page, click my playlists, and you have about 12 years worth of everyday daily videos of me trucking. Have fun. <laughs> Hope you got some time and some popcorn.